Hey everybody, Adam Toreska, Adam Toreska Videos. I'm here at Kirby Park with JP Videos, and we're going to explore the abandoned zoo here at Kirby Park. Hopefully you'll be interested in coming along and see this. Come along with us. Hey guys, welcome to the replay here of today's live stream. We are at Kirby Park Zoo, sorry, Kirby Park in Wilkesbury to explore the abandoned ruins of the Kirby Park Zoo. This is a follow-up live stream from a previous one that didn't have good quality, so we're gonna rectify that today. Share some information and some photos of some of the structures that we're gonna come upon. So once we get a few people in here, we will get moving. There I am, welcome everyone. I am joined today by Mr. Adam Tereska. Hey everybody. He's here filming too for his channel. And we do have a little bit of information we're gonna be able to share once we get closer to the location and a few photos I'm gonna share of the structures as to how they used to look when they were intact. And it's all gonna be made possible through the Prism Live Studio app that I'm streaming on right now that allows me to share that during the stream. So pretty excited to do that this time. Hello everyone, welcome. I see some people popping in here. I know it's kind of early for a Monday morning, but we want to take advantage of the good weather and minimize the crowds and kind of just share this with you guys. A lot of people don't know this even existed. Even locals to the area have reached out and said, really, there was a zoo? I'm like, yep, believe it or not. Came to see a little. If you can't watch the whole thing, obviously catch the replay. It will be on my channel as a main video. So whatever you do miss, you can always tune back. <clears throat> I'm over here to show you. There's Adam. How you doing? So he has joined me for today's adventure. We've been planning this for about almost three weeks now. Yeah. We keep getting rained out. So we said, let's change the day. We're going to go on a Monday. And it's nice and sunny and calm and around 40 degrees. So it's pretty much perfect weather. And there's no no leaves on the trees yet. So we should still, still be able to see everything relatively easily um, without any searching or hunting through bushes or trees or stuff like that. So if you guys are ready, we're gonna start getting mobile here. We do have to climb the dike here and um, take the walking trail through the woods. So it's gonna take about maybe five minutes until we do reach our beginning part of our adventure. So if you want, come along with us, we'll get started. Now, if you do want to do any research for yourself, there are websites online. All you have to do is Google search Kirby Park Zoo. And a lot of the information I am sharing and some of the photos came from the websites that are listed there. So if you want to do any investigative work on your own, you're welcome to. There's History Hunter and Tom. Hello. Silver Wings, the kingdom within. Hello. Hey, Edith. Hello, everyone tuning in. Thanks for joining us today. <clears throat> Gorgeous day here in Northeast Pennsylvania. We got a nice, change. yeah, <laughs> sunny skies, puffy clouds, minimal breeze. Hey, exploring a CF. What's up, man? Morning, Christine. There's Jacqueline. We're down in your neck of the woods, Jacqueline. This is considered Wilkesbury, right? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. That or the river itself is a border, one of the two. I guess it'd probably be easiest if we climb here. Okay. Yeah, for once it's not raining here. Yeah. So you're climbing a man-made dike, which is for flood control. And this is partly what uh, ended the demise of the, of the zoo. And now it's just a uh, obstacle course. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Good. Hey, I'm Steve. Oh, Steve, yeah, I saw you coming on there. Yeah. You're close by. Yeah. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Have you been here before? To no, I went down before though. Yeah, you walked through? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see anybody really, so. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> what do we expect to see? There's going to be some 
remnants of buildings, some structures, some old roadways, pathways. So there were, will be a few things to see as I catch my breath. <laughs> Uh, my apologies in advance if I keep, keep sniffling. It is it just happens with me when it's ever cold out. I'm really active. My nose just starts running. So I'll try to keep it to a minimum. Hey, John. I love the live streams. Thanks. Doing good, Elaine. Why did it close? We will share the information once we get into... The heart of the location so just stay tuned and we'll explain some of the history about it hopefully it's not too muddy today yeah i hear that But if it is, they'll dry and that's not completely shoes off and you're good to go. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So we have to just walk a little bit further to get to the pathway here. And we're going to start making our way through the woods. And we'll give you some nice riverfront views as well. Some pretty gorgeous areas to see. Now, the, you may have heard, there's a gentleman that was just walking by us. He's actually one of my viewers. Um, he commented, one of the people commented that he's local to the area, he didn't know about the zoo. And he happened to come here and check it out, and we just bumped into each other, shook hands, said hello. So it was nice to meet him. All right, so this is where the paved portion ends. We're going to take the lesser popular trail here. This is also um, well-known territory for homeless people. There's a last time we were here, several homeless camps. And some of the structures we are going to check out too, you can see where people have been practically living in them, using them for storage. So, just got to be vigilant and do things, you know, cautiously. So last time we were here, we did start getting some interruptions with signal. So if you guys could give me a little update, is everything coming through nice and clear? Hey, Ashley, watch them from work. Don't get in trouble. What am I using the live stream? I'm using the Galaxy S10 Plus. And it's mounted on my Osmo Mobile 3 gimbal. Pocono Joe says it's clear. All right, nice and clear. Good. Clearing, clears a bell. Not alone. I will, hang on. Do have company. Oh. Yeah. Recognize him from the chats as the moderator, Adam Tresca, and he joined me today. So we're not alone. He wanted to see it though, so we're doing it together. And we're going to be getting started just in a moment here with our first location, where I will, will share some of the history off my cheat sheet here. And there's a couple structures, as I mentioned, I do have photos I'm going to share with you, showing you how they used to look when they actually wore intact. So let's uh, flip the camera back around. Yeah, it's actually a gorgeous day. Oh, hear the popo. Hey, there's David. So you can see we do have some items here. Stone and brick structures. Now, what's left of the zoo is pretty much 10% of what used to exist. It was a much larger zoo. A lot of it got taken out during a flood and the construction of the dike. So what we're going to see today that's remaining is only about 10 to 20% of what used to exist here. We are in Pennsylvania, Amanda. This looks like probably a, a planter, maybe a uh, fountain. And 
and here we can see the uh, the brick hiding underneath the concrete plaster there. Hey, there's Barbara. <laughs> Open everything. Yeah, right. Oh, guys, look what we found. Nature's carpet. Yes, yes, indeed. Nature's carpet. And a sneaker. <laughs> we need a toy or Christmas items. I'm sure so, we'll find Yeah, I'm sure we'll find it. Fire the zookeeper. <laughs> so, let me mount you down here for a second. Okay, uh, let me get the screen off here. So I'm gonna share a little bit of information I was able to find on various websites. I kind of uh, put it together. There's a lot of like stories and like people's recollection of it. Not a whole lot of solid facts, but I'm gonna share what I was able to find. Uh, this was designed in 1921. It was designed by a group of people and they decided to want to put a zoo in Luzerne County here, more specifically Wilkesbury. So 1921 was the design of the zoo itself. After years of construction, it officially opened 1932. After operating success successfully for four years, 1936, a massive flood came through from the Susquehanna River, which is behind me here, flooded 90% of the zoo. Animals had to be evacuated. Some of them were trapped in their cages. And that was the start of their downfall, start of their demise. After they cleaned up after the zoo, they decided that they always had to build a levee. So, a lot of the zoo got kind of contained, you know, made into a smaller rendition of its former self. So they built the levee, I think, early 1940s, maybe 41. And at that point, the zoo was still operating up until 1946, where attendance went very low. There was only maybe a quarter of the stuff to see, which was normally here. 1946 it officially closed. They relocated any existing animals, which was like monkeys and other smaller animals, to other area zoos. So. 1932 to 1946 was this total operation, but its highlight years, better, grander years, was 1932 to 1936. Now, if that flood didn't happen, there's a very well good chance it could have extended its life into maybe the 50s, 60s, even 70s. Could be, be even here today. We really don't know. We do know, though, that the zoo was much larger than what we're seeing today. The levee that was constructed, though, was built over sections of the zoo. So a lot of the zoo is no longer here, no longer remnants of it. So what we're gonna show you today, besides the structure here, is a walking path, which was a walking path for the zoo to see a grandstand area, a little pavilion, restrooms, and some other foundations and remnants and ruins. So that is the brief history of it. Again, there is websites, there's photos online. Just Google search Kirby Park Zoo, and you could do a little digging for yourself. Once we do come upon some of the structures though, I do have older photos showing you how they would have looked. So we could do a type of a before and after type of thing. So. Hopefully that answers any of your questions. If you do have any more, Google is your best friend. So <laughs> we're going to keep moving on now. A lot more to see, but perfect day to check it out. So hopefully you guys are going to stick around. If you can't catch the replay, you may miss something of importance. So. As Adam stated, he found a sneaker here. As far as I know, I can't, there was rumors that some animals did die in the drowning. Yeah, I'm gonna get a quick look at the river here. Okay. Um, there's no confirmation of it, just rumors, so I really don't know. I do know they did a, you know, emergency evacuation to rescue the animals, but no confirmation of any animal deaths, just rumors. So I'm gonna give you just a brief look here. It's a nice, beautiful viewing area here of the Susquehanna River. It's 
the Market Street Bridge right there. And nice peace and quiet of the river. As looking into downtown Wilkesbury, back there is a, a structure you can't see from here. It's actually right there. If you see those little peaks over there, let me zoom in. You see those little like spikes right there? That is the what is it called? The uh, oh, the Iron Temple Theater. That is one of the buildings I filmed a few years ago, which is currently undergoing restoration. But the abandoned Iron Temple Theater is over there, directly to just behind the bridge post. There would have been the Sterling Hotel, which is the old abandoned hotel they knocked down a few years ago. Didn't get to it in time to film it. And we got some geese flying around. And as you can tell, it's a good viewing area. They do have benches here for your viewing pleasure. And apparently people have been having some little fires here. Again, this is very well known homeless territory. We were here last time, there was multiple tents and almost like a little camp set up almost resembling a compound so we try to stay clear of those areas but you know this is public walking area so we have every right to be here as well as they do it's just we're not camping here overnight temperature i believe is around 40 degrees and right here where we are right now absolutely no wind it's like ideal conditions now there's one thing we're going to be on the hunt for i'm going to share a photo with you right now it's actually a wading pool let me grab the photo So this here, oh, this is a waiting pool. It says, looking south from the cottage, Kirby Day, 1924, Luzerne County Historical Society photos. This is a old waiting pool that is located somewhere back here. Supposedly still here today. I did see an after photo on the website where someone took a picture within the last several years. So we're gonna be on the hunt for that. That was a ch children's waiting pool, just a, have it as a fun activity for kids when they're visiting the zoo so we didn't find that last time but we're going to be more vigilant this time pay a little more closer attention to detail should be an open area resembling what we're seeing in the photo right now so hopefully we'll find it if not this is one of the things that used to exist here all right let's keep moving on Oh, I wonder if that's a waiting pool right there, actually. That's what I'm thinking. Jeez, I didn't even spot that. I knew I brought you for a reason. <laughs> actually, we may have just stumbled upon the waiting pool. So, yeah. Yeah, I think so. All right, let me throw that photo back up. We're going to do before and after here. Jeez, I don't know how I missed that. So, we're going to leave this photo right here. And this is what we're going to be looking for. We walked right by it last time. And thankfully, Adam glanced over and found it. All right, so you guys are looking at the before photo. We're going to switch to the after. And here it is. Adam's actually standing right inside of it. This is the waiting pool. We found it. It's a complete circle made out of looks like concrete or stone. Looks like concrete. Is it concrete? Yeah. So very awesome that we stumbled upon this. Green. Now we're gonna get a closer look. So right now I'm actually walking inside the pond or the uh, waiting pool. Yeah. It's still pretty hard. You guys can see the border of it here. It is concrete lined all the way around a complete circle. Yeah, we walked right by this last time. It always helps to have an extra pair of eyes. Now it looks almost more like a swamp or a pond with the overgrowth, but this was indeed a children's wading pool. 
And he said there was some color over here. It looks green. So you can see right there, looks like maybe uh, steps or the lining of it, it is green in color. I'm gonna actually set the camera down. I'll walk in here, give you guys a size perspective. Almost went down. All right, let me set you down here. <laughs> so if you guys saw that not the deepest of pools it's just designed for kids i was going to go under get my hair wet but i forgot my speedo so <laughs> won't be appropriate to go in my birthday suit today but very cool that we found this though. Big props and thanks to Adam for spotting that. So, awesome job. Thank you. All right, we do have more to see, so let's keep moving. Um, any information, um, what do I do with it? If those of you are tuning in late, I will recap it one more time briefly. It was designed 1921. Built through the late 20s, opened officially 1932, operated successfully up until 1936 where a massive flood came through, wiped it out, and ended up making the zoo much smaller than what it used to be, and they ended up constructing the levee, which is straight ahead, that big hill there. I believe that was 1941. The zoo operated at a much smaller capacity until 1946, when it ultimately closed due to declining attendance and just wasn't very profitable anymore, so. So we do have, I do have two more photos to share with you of two more structures. This is not one of them, but this is indeed something that used to be here at one point. So the unfortunate part is unless you come here, oh, it's like a teepee there, you see that? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Unless you come here with someone who used to actually visit the zoo, it's hard to tell what used to be what. This could have been a type of concession stand, could have been an animal enclosure. You really don't know and no way of finding out because there's only a limited amount of information and photos available back from the 1930s and 40s. So you see though, right by Adam is like a, somebody made a teepee there. Look, it might be a potential shelter or something. Looks pretty neat though. Yeah, they did a nice job on it. I wonder if this is some sort of a stage or something because of all the reinforcements with all these pillars. Yeah, it could have been that or it could have been like a bear enclosure maybe just for maybe. extra support. That's why I said it's hard to tell what used to be which. It could have been entertainment, could have been animal enclosure. But you have to kind of use your own imagination and speculate. So somebody, yeah, is doing a little reservation work here. <laughs> Good then. But clear distinction of a structure here. Adam, you know, stated maybe a venue, like a stage. Um, I don't think for certain that was that because we're going to be coming upon a building that was actually a venue, which I'll be sharing a photo of. It was like a grandstand. But I'm thinking maybe this was an animal enclosure for some type of maybe heavier animal, maybe um, bears. Um, I don't know what else it could have been, but these are some pretty thick concrete supports, pylons here. 
Just to, if you guys give me a quick update, everything's still coming through nice and clear. Coconut Joe, 500 feet away. Well, one of the local residents, I think his name is Steve, is actually here walking around and he's like, hey, JP, I heard you talking about this place. I never knew it was here. Is it all good? All good in the hood? Somebody. A bit of useless information so far for clothing. We found a pair of sunglasses, a sneaker, and a pair of leggings. Okay. <laughs> Somebody was having fun. Try to here. piece that together, yeah. <laughs> So we got a section of a trail here we're going to be walking on. This was a former trail or walking path for guests to come navigate through the zoo. Again, a lot of this overgrowth here didn't exist back in the 30s and 40s. But we're going to come upon some paved sections too where the uh, macadam or pavement is still buried under some leaves. So, But this is a nice walking, biking trail. It is quite popular here. There's actually somebody walking in the woods on the back end of us. We heard some trees. Oh yeah, here's the pavement here. So this is the old blacktop, Macadam Road. Inside the chopper in the background it's very quiet here oh what's this uh oh uh oh what have we got here <laughs> if i'm not mistaken i think that's five nights at freddy's because lily likes that stuff yeah it does look like it so let's see <laughs> how do i look Divine, absolutely divine. <laughs> so, I don't know, can we classify that as abandoned? I Officially so. abandoned? It's, it's kind place. of like a children's story, right? You know, we'll uh, see if we can prop up in the tree here. There, we got a new home for some unbeknowns hikers and bikers that come through here, they're gonna think, what is that tree growing? <laughs> Improvement, all right. Maybe I should wear it full time. And again, you have to ask yourself, why is that back here? You know, why is a children's Halloween mask just laying in the middle of the woods? So, not that there's anything bad happen, but it just gets the mind going. You wouldn't typically see something like that here. Bonnie the Bunny. Okay, so that is, I believe, Five Nights at Freddy's then, right, Sandra? So I do know a little bit of stuff based on having a daughter who's into that stuff. You know more about it than I do. <laughs> and my daughter's into it as well. <laughs> well, truth, at least I'm not in Pittston like a Pittston man, right? <laughs> yes, okay. Halloween party, possibly, yeah. I mean, it's possible. Could have been someone scaring, doing some pranks. Okay, here's the next structure here. This is the more significant one that's just kind of peculiar with the basement. So I'm gonna pull up the old photo right now to show you what used to be here. And then we're gonna to cut to what it looks like today. So give me a moment here. So I'm gonna show you, uh, I'll let you read that first. And then I'm gonna show you the photo part. So this is a picture of a site capture most recently completed Mr. Fred M. Kirby Magnificent Gifts to Wyoming Valley Bandstand 55 feet wide by 27 feet long and accommodates 100 musicians with design by New York firm of architects. Again, these pictures and information is on websites available. So keep this image burned in your brain. We're going to show you what it looks like today. And just imagine, you know, we're walking in some forest right now, some 
nice sets of woods and to see a structure like that would be quite impressive. So I'm gonna to try to line up the angle best I can. And this was part of a zoo. It was a, you know, kind of like a grandstand. So I'm gonna give you one last glimpse of that picture. I'm gonna take it off and show you what we have here in front of us today. All right, this is what's left of it. Now, if you were to, you know, pull up the photo on your own, you could do a comparison and see it does line up. The whole upper top of the structure is gone. What we have is just the bottom foundation of it, which at one time had a full walkthrough basement. Now, um, Adam's actually sticking his head through now. It's actually filled in now from debris from flooding and storms. So it's more like a crawl space, but it's a full walkthrough basement. They have plumbing here. They had a lot of different things here, electricity. And now it's almost like a hideaway for homeless people. There's clothes here, signs of people living here, even in the backside. This is actually, it's square here on the top and back portion, it's curved, it's round. It's like almost like semi-circular. And here is one of the entryways. You can see clothing. People, without a doubt, living here. Now again, this is a full walkthrough basement. It is filled up with debris, but it actually goes through. There's different chambers. I believe there was bathrooms under here. But last time I was here, oh, sorry about that. Last time I was here, all this clothing wasn't under here like this. So this is more or less a shelter for people now. But at one time it was a complete walkthrough basement. So here's the steps that go up to the top where like the stage area would have been. And you can see the back portion here, how I said it's curved. It's almost like a circular design to it. But the basement actually goes underneath this whole thing. It's actually open underneath, believe it or not. It's more of a crawl space now, as I mentioned, because it's filled in from flooding with debris. But as I show you this back part here, you'll see where people can get inside. Anyone in there? What's that? I'm seeing if anyone's in here. Okay. I'm gonna grab my flashlight. This is underneath. You can see it's open. It just fills in with debris. So this is one big open cavity underneath the grandstand, which I believe was like for restrooms and maybe, um... no, this is the flood back in 1936. But now it's a homeless hideaway. You can see some of the original structure and architecture right here. See the curved piece here, the yellow? It used to be yellow in color, just like we showed in that photo. So that is how it used to originally look, what's left of it anyways. And we got steps here, which are, they're almost not even full steps. And of course we got more of Mother Nature's carpet. But as you'll see back here, there's more areas. It's so filled up with junk under here, it's ridiculous. Look at all the junk. And it goes, you know, around that way. I mean, I could literally crawl in there and crawl through. I really don't want to crawl on top of this garbage. There very well could be needles or something mixed in. 
but you have to just imagine this dirt floor was much deeper. You were able to walk through here, you know, standing up normally. But this is, wraps around the whole building and there's different corridors under the building for bathrooms, for storage, whatever else, utilities maybe. But now it's just littered, it's like a mini landfill. And I think once we get up on top, I'll show you, there's still some pipes too from the plumbing. There's a gorgeous shot right here. Yeah, they did, they had live music here, um, orchestras, they did like um, special engagement acts, you know, like talking, um, you know, speeches, stuff like that. So, because somebody's drying their shirt out. So, it's unfortunate what has become of such an historic place. An old zoo is now just ruins, remains, and now a garbage pit. I'll put that photo up one more time just to show you what we are looking at right here. It is this building. This is what we're checking out. So we are underneath the bottom of that, below all the people. But it was a very amazing structure back in its time. But I'm going to go up on top now and show you where the uh, plumbing is. I definitely wouldn't recommend coming here at night, at least by yourself. It's without a doubt, people are staying here and living here. I'm gonna try to make up these steps that are no longer steps. Okay, I'm gonna take the picture off now. We'll show you what we got here. So you can see there's a small pipe here. There's a drain right there. So they did have plumbing here, possibly for water fountains, a sink, possibly toilets, but underground though, I know it was walking areas. Now standing up here, you can see how it curves around. It's a complete circle. So that big high rise backstage or back area that's really high up in the air, would have been right here, shooting up in the air. And we are standing right now where would have been the stage area for the bands, for the orchestras, whoever played here, talked here, talking out towards the river, and the audience would be in front of it. So the picture that we showed was taken somewhere over here, shooting towards me. So, hope that gives you some understanding as to what we're seeing and how it used to look. But regardless, it is cool to see something still existing here. But the garbage and the homeless people living here is a whole other story, but I know they got to do what they can to survive. I'm actually going to set you guys down once again and uh, show you what it looks like here when I walk around. Not sure if you could see me, but you should be able to hear me. But if you come here in the summertime, though, this would be almost unrecognizable. It's going to be really overgrown, surrounded by weeds and trees and bushes and all types of foliage and growth. So, if you ever want to come see it, winter time like now is the best time to come and see it. Otherwise, not only the top portion of this, but surrounding it, it's going to be like a needle in a haystack at that point. Get back down and I grab my backpack and we will keep moving.
Gotta find my backpack. Oh, there it is. Okay. Walking these steps is like walking a uh, slippery slope here. It's not even steps anymore. They're covered in leaves and moss. What makes it slippery? All right, so um, so what are you guys' thoughts so far? I mean, do you think um, it's cool seeing what's remaining here? Do you think they should take away whatever's left so that homeless people aren't using it as a garbage dump and living space? Or do you think they should maybe re be, rebuild it, make it like a historical tour place? What are your thoughts on what we're showing you today? If we do have one more structure too, we're gonna show you. Actually, I'll retract that. More than one more structure, but one more where I do have the older photo of it. I'll just see it brought back like the Nag Park in Scranton. Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Rebuild it. Now the only thing is, and not to say anything negatively, I'm just being realistic here, where this is located is not the best area. Wilkes-Barre doesn't have the best reputation, especially when it comes to vandals, graffiti, um, just destruction and theft. There's a good chance if they try to rebuild it, it wouldn't survive very long until it started getting hit by those type of individuals. So they'd have to either keep watch under it, keep it fenced in, have security systems, something to protect it because it just happens on a regular occurrence down this way, unfortunately. But I do think they need to do something. Leaving it the way it is, it's cool for us like explorers to come here and try to piece together what it was and to see ruins from the past. But obviously, Underneath here is a garbage dump. People are living here. They're littering around it. I'm not saying it's all homeless people, but you could definitely tell people are living here. But I think they either need to rebuild it or just take it away altogether, let nature reclaim the land. But leaving it the way it is right now, it just uh, doesn't paint a good image for Kirby Park. So, you have any thoughts so far? Uh, <clears throat> well, I totally agree. I'd love to see the place get redone or at least repurposed to a point where it can be like a historical spot. Like I said, with all the potential vandalism that would take place and all the garbage being left in it and everything else, that could be a, an understandable problem why they wouldn't. But at least we have it here now so we can uh, document it. And then if it does go away, at least we have it. Right. Um, it is a shame to see that people are using it as a homeless shelter and using it as a garbage dump. Uh, it makes me sick just thinking about it. Um, but if there's some way they can at least do something to show that it was here and what it was because so many people myself included until your first live stream you did never even knew this was here mm -hmm. so if they could do something with it that'd be great if they were to leave it just go to nature that's fine too it'd just be if they could maybe seal it up just keep the garbage out of it and keep people out of it because should it collapse on somebody no one will even know they're even they're back here that's true so that, that you know a safety factor comes into play as well yeah, so I agree 100% with what he said, but um, like I said, if you want to come see it for yourself, now the video's not over, I'm just giving you an update. If you want to come see it for yourself, though, if you come to where we started the video, there's a little pavilion there in a pond. All you do is walk up the dike, which is the levee, and follow the path towards Market Street Bridge. And you'll see where the pavement meets up with a dirt path, and that dirt path brings you back to this way. And we're going to follow it all the way out, which will bring us back out to the levee system. So it's very easy to find. For the most part, it is relatively easy walking ground. It's a pretty well manicured trail. But I do recommend bringing some type of protection. I do have my pepper spray right here. Adam has protection. I have protection in my bag. Um, obviously, safety numbers goes a long way. Not to say that something bad will happen, but you just never know. It's in an undesirable area. It is very well known. You know, homeless people live here. People, maybe not the right state of mind, who have questionable decision-making skills. You don't know, and you just want to be on your guard. But um, we're doing it for you, though. If you can't make it here or don't want to make it here, that's why you can watch from the safety of your home. And hopefully you guys enjoy the rest of the video so far. If you do, make sure you give it a thumbs up. But we're going to get situated and keep moving on. we got more to see. So we'll be back with you in a moment.
just too cool back here. Yeah. And it's like you said, like you didn't know it existed. I didn't until recently. Yeah. Many other people didn't either. Yeah. So. No one in my family knew this place existed. It looked at me like I had six heads when I mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna keep moving on. More to see. We do have one more structure to show you, a before and after photo. And then another structure after that, which we can speculate what it is based on what we've read on the website. And then we're going to follow the trail, which takes us to some really nice wilderness areas here. And we'll probably going to end the video. There's a really cool train bridge at the other end of the park. I showed it last time, but it was bad quality. So we're going to show it again. So if you guys want to see a really cool, awesome train bridge, that will be coming up a little bit further along on our stream. Hey, Monica's in here. Hopefully your internet's working this time. And any comments I did miss, as always, I will go ahead and watch the replay. I love watching it back, reading all the comments, seeing what you guys think of our videos. So be rest assured, I will see what is being written and talked about, even if I'm not paying attention to it at the moment. There's a, something up here, look like a washout on the left. Drain. Yeah, there's a little washout area here, maybe uh, like a type of culvert. I'm gonna take a walk down and see how it looks. If anything, it'd be a cool look at the river. I think I checked this out before, it just looks a little differently this time. Somebody's been here though, there's footprints here. Oh wow, this is just a nice, beautiful viewing area. Look at the reflection in the water too. Wow, that's gorgeous. I'm gonna tilt you down, you can see. You can actually see through the water. Coffee on me, handsome, but not Starbucks coffee. Monica, can I get hot chocolate, is that okay? <laughs> but thank you so very much. You can see to the bottom a few feet, but that water is like glass though in the middle. You can see the reflection of the buildings, the trees. You hear birds chirping, it's nice and quiet here. Yeah, that's like picture perfect right here. Uh, the water is semi-polluted, not only from industries or people, but from acid mine drainage as well. We showed parts of Susquehanna near the Knox mine disaster and parts north where the water is stained orange. So, I mean, there are certain parts that are clean. There are certain parts you could, you know, go into, but I wouldn't advise drinking from it or eating the fish in this area. But yeah, that reflection is amazing. I'm actually close to breaking a sweat. It's actually quite warm right now. No breeze, sunny skies. It's like absolutely amazing. BK, I like the new, like your videos new here. Well, welcome BK and thank you so much for your donation. And understand too, I am using the Prism Life Studio app. If you guys do donate, leaving a sticker, I unfortunately won't be able to see it until I watch the replay. Stickers don't come through for some reason but the normal super chats where you leave a comment just like Monica and BK did, I could see those. So it's not that I'm ignoring them. They just don't come through as stickers. But enough of the view. We're gonna keep moving on. In springtime, I will be doing a video focusing more on the Susquehanna River and the Lackawanna River, showing the detrimental effects from acid mine drainage and showing how it looks modern day from the sky using the drone. And even where a borehole was drilled 300 feet down to release the acid mine drainage, which was at one point flooding into people's basements, believe it or not. So that video will be coming up in the springtime.
and mods just uh thank you ahead of time for your help answering any questions taking care of any issues in the chat i don't think you'd be glowing you might grow like a extra finger or something <laughs> maybe a another big toe but no, I've known people that have swimmed in there, have, you know, when fishing in there, more or less just for recreation, not for keeping the fish or for, you know, doing anything as far as drinking the water for a water source. This is a nice area here. Extra finger will be cool. It'll be hard to find gloves though. That's the thing. And there's somebody's little camping spot cooking spot. This has been concrete. Is there anything on there? No, put nothing on it, but... Probably was at one point. Yeah. Like a little post. Yeah, it's sunken concrete. I wonder if that's some kind of a safety thing or something to... Look, these are unopened. This is someone's meals. Wow. So they're... Opening up and cooking right here over the fire in that metal tray, like a pie tin. So someone's, you know, doing what they can to survive out here. Chickpeas, I think I would mix chickpeas and mixed greens. I would starve. At least have a can of corn. Just following you a few days ago, Missouri here. Welcome, Cindy. I I actually um, haven't gone fishing. I mean, besides taking lily fishing before, I haven't gone fishing for myself probably since I was, geez, early 20s. I have fishing gear. I just unfortunately don't have the patience for it. You know, like unless it's a really good swimming hole. I mean, fishing hole where you're going to get bite after bite, which is not very common. I just lose interest after about 30 minutes. So if I buy a license, I'll probably go fishing once or twice and then that's it. But maybe I should try it again. You know, maybe we can make a little video out of that. Take you to some of the hidden fishing holes, maybe, and see what's in the, in the waters. Not only with the underwater camera, but with the fishing rod as well. So anything's possible. We'll see. I will be grabbing my uh, hunting license, so not to go hunting, but to go to the rifle range. They do require a hunting license or a range permit. There's some. I'm going to do a uh, target shooting video with my 22 where I like to take out. And here's more signs. So, like I said, unfortunately, it is littered about people's belongings left behind. Probably somebody left this here this morning will return by the evening. There's like a tote bag there, a tarp, a jug of water. Baby shoe. Is there? Yeah. Where? On the other side of the jug of water. Oh, there's a bunch of shoes here. Yeah, there's like a kid's boot. Very sad. Yeah. It just makes you realize how fortunate you are, you know, to have a roof over your head. Despite how bad things are in the world, some people have it much, much worse. So I know a lot of people complain, including myself, about everyday things like traffic, bad drivers, but these people probably don't even own automobiles. We're fortunate enough to own vehicles. We could stop and get food at a restaurant where they're heating up canned food over a fire. So it does indeed put things into perspective. And just to say, count your blessings as they like to say, be fortunate for what you have, not what you don't have. But continuing on, we have up ahead, two more buildings to check out. We are walking on a 
paved pathway here, which is here since the zoo was in existence. And we got somebody walking ahead of us here too. Nice area of woods though. Nice and open. Hello. Hello. Got a pretty massive uprooted tree here. That's a big one. That is big. It took down other trees too when it came down. Yes, it did. And I, not to keep boring you guys with this, but I just love the way it looks. I have to show this again. This log here, covered in some really thick moss as Mother Nature's carpet. Just looks so gorgeous. It's just so vibrant and just looks like, you know, almost like it was put there purposely, you know, even though it's grown naturally. I just, I don't know what it is. I'm just fascinated by it. Low bridge. So up ahead, we do have a structure. Now, on the websites when I was doing the research, they talked about it. They said they think it was a restroom or a bathroom. I personally don't think it is because there's a lot of windows on this building and most bathrooms don't have a lot of windows. You know, if you ever go to an amusement park or even another zoo or a tourist type area, most bathrooms are pretty much enclosed. They maybe have one window, even like a rest stop, minimal windows. I don't believe this was a restroom, bathroom, but we'll show it to you. You can see what you think for yourself. And then after that, we do have one more building, which I hope we didn't pass already, because yeah, there is one more thing I want to show. And, oh yeah, it's after this. I love trees. Well, I'll give you a nice shot like this. How's that? Does that look cool? All right. So here's the structure on the left. I'm sorry, on the right. Now on the websites, they said this was a bathroom. To me, it resembles a concession stand. You see the doorway there and the big window, which would have been like counter service, you know? Yeah, we did find the old fountain. That was towards the beginning. It was actually a uh, waiting pool. So based on the looks of the outside here, what do you guys think this is or was? Do you think it was bathrooms? Do you think it was like a concession stand? Maybe souvenir stand? You hear church bells in the distance. So my theories and thoughts is that this was either a concession stand, possibly a souvenir stand, maybe quarters for um, employees. I don't think it was a bathroom. Even though it states that on the internet, on the website, but the old saying goes, you can't believe everything you read on the internet. So I'll take you inside. I highly doubt this was a bathroom. Too many windows, not enough privacy. There's something here to use to hold something up, like maybe a table or something. Yeah, or a counter maybe. Counter. Yeah, that window right there stands out as a concession window. So 
but a lot of windows. Even this backside too, identical, another concession window. So it might have been, a lot of concession stands do have more than one window. Got the bells ringing. Yep. I think you can see the old wood right there on the Green left. Work. Yeah. This could have been a vent. This might have been a, maybe a vent system for here for a concession stand, I think. I yeah. Think this would be a bath. Like you said, with all the windows, there's no way you'd have the privacy for a bathroom. Right, so. exactly. This had to be a concession stand. I'm going to put you down over here so you can see with the light. I'm going to. good size scale compared to myself you know it's oh look at right there oh yeah see it Ben 10 19 <laughs> that's pretty recent yes um, so this is what it looks like you know it's not a huge structure just big enough for a cooking booth selling popcorn pizza whatever else they have at the time Adam did know there's some mounts here that they had something mounted here on the wall looks like it could have been Cooking uh, equipment could have been a counter, could have been a table, but way too many windows for a bathroom. So I'm guessing concession stand number one, gift shop number two, maybe employee quarters like a smoke break room number three. We're gonna go along those lines. Internet does say bathroom to me, doesn't feel like a bathroom. Way too, way too much uh, windows and public viewing areas, so. Do you want to show you guys something? I'm not sure if Mike's still watching from out naturing. If he's not, I'll have to tell him to watch the replay. There's something I want to show because our number one exploring buddy has been here, even though we never met. But I will show you. You guys may have remember we mentioned this person in it before. They have been here pretty recently, just a few months ago. So. <laughs> It's amazing that this person is like, or almost like following them everywhere they go. Kind of ironic. And it looks like we got a customer here. Cheeseburger fries and a Coke, please. No ice. <laughs> <laughs> Double that, I'll have one too. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can even see the former color of it too, it was green. Yeah. And it's actually peeling. So, probably had multiple layers of paint. I'd say that's probably the last one, or the first one, I should say. Yeah, definitely original color. QT, modern day tagging, yep. Slowly, one of these days, we're going to watch QT painting his name somewhere, and we're going to say, hey, we know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> so does the rest of the JP Videos family. We've been on the hunt for you. Okay, I'm going to pull up another picture now. We have one more structure up here. I'm going to show you the before photo. So, let's see. This here, Pavilion and Grove looking south, Kirby Park Zoo. This is a, a historical collection. So this is a pavilion, like a type of gazebo. I'm going to keep you facing this way just so you don't see it yet. So just get a good look at that image. And I'll show you what it looks like today. Well, I'm loving that I could do this with you guys, to share the photos instead of just talking about it. <coughs> Excuse me. It's much better when I can give you visual, visual representation instead of just trying to describe it. There's actually a structure just like that at Nayag Park. Uh, I think it's a little bit larger than this one, but they use it for music, for venues, um, even for like small parties and picnics. I'm going to try to line up that photo, though, with what is here today. So I'm going to try my best to get the right angle. I think it's going to be right over here, if I'm not mistaken. Now, it does look slightly different, but you'll be able to recognize it, though. Okay, I'm going to take the picture off now. And I'm going to show you what we have in front of us. 
And there it is. Almost the exact same plot, spot the photo was taken. Steps are right there. But it is a, like an octagon shape. So this is what's left of the pavilion here. A little gazebo type structure. And what's left of it is just the base foundation. But you can see the distinct angles of it and the walls, just like I showed in that photo. Without a doubt, it's the same structure. Now, these concrete blocks up here, I don't believe are original. I'm not, mis not positive. Looks like they were added at some point. But, oh, actually here's a, maybe this is the main set of steps here. So maybe I had the wrong side. Let me, give me a second here. Okay, I think this is the angle right here. There's the steps. This is about the approximate location the photo was taken. So you see Adam up there, you can see based on his size, how big the structure would have been. But that's like a grand, not a grand staircase, but the main set of steps. Behind him is like a smaller set of steps. So this is the angle right here where that photo was taken. And you can see where the earth is kind of built up around it. But the backside of it definitely is exposed. Now it's almost like a great little party spot. You got these blocks that are kind of here like benches, you know? Oh, look at more QT. Huh? October 21st, two days later. Huh. I wonder if he's living back here. So I'm going to set you down just to show you. Yeah, nice little spot here, not too bad. We'll sit here, cook up some lunch for ourselves. Anyone bring matches? <laughs> so, would have been a cool structure when it was erected, you know. Nice little covered pavilion, gazebo type structure. These, these are almost like marble or like slate blocks here. I don't know what they were used for, but they are circumferencing the structure. QT sightings from yesterday. Oh yeah, I know Nayog has them, I believe. <laughs> Maybe the guy walking by was QT. That's the thing. We don't know who it is. It could, we could have seen them already. We really don't know. So this is the last structure that I know of here that I, that I do have photos of shown before and after. We're going to continue walking along to see if we discover anything else. There may be more hidden back here. Some of the woods are pretty dense with... Uh, bamboo and fallen trees stuff like that oh no there is another structure i do see it so we're not done yet never mind just forget what i said go back 30 seconds prior and continue on the video there <laughs> there's something in the woods over there see it yep so we're gonna head over there next i love impromptu finds yeah You're the best And here's just a quick look back where we came from. Again, it is a nice piece of woods here. And there's the su supposed bathroom there, which we'll call a concession stand, but some little soft muddy spots here from recent rain, but overall, it's not bad walking conditions. Maybe that's the bathroom. Yeah, possibly.
Yeah, there's something back here. I think we missed it last time. I have to do a little bushwhacking here. Maybe not. All the windows. Yeah, there's a lot of windows in that. some big monstrous trees here too. And here we are. Looks almost identical. Now, I do have some more thoughts based on seeing this. This is almost identical to the other building, which makes me question, maybe it was a separate men's and women's bathroom. But again, with all the bathroom. But this is identical to the other building. So, definitely some possible theories. My gut instinct is still saying not bathroom, but twin buildings, couple hundred feet apart anything's possible yeah. this is someone's living space for now got a tube of toothpaste there wow oh yeah thank you there too yeah i see it on my anniversary <laughs> and right there too 1021. Yep. The only way I could see these being a bathroom is if they had these windows blocked off at the time and they were like maybe a vent system or something. But yeah, somebody said maybe frosted glass for light. Could be. That's possible. It is possible. I'm not going to rule it out. No. It just it just doesn't have the normal look of a bathroom. But it had some like big like. If these were indeed windows, you know, some pretty big windows here. Yes, they are. Yeah. Um, people are saying, well, maybe pipes coming out of the wall. Do we see any pipes? I'm not seeing any pipes. Can't see pipes, don't see any drains because the ground is built up with leaves and dirt and debris. I don't know, unless we get solid confirmation or photos from the past, we're gonna just have to use our own speculation to see. But I wanna show you though, the tree growing next to this, look at the size of this tree. Yeah, can you go stand in front of that? Sure can. Now Adam's a big guy. That tree is enormous though. Like it's probably two and a half widths of him and it goes way up to the top. I'm 6'2", 258, so... Yeah. That tree makes him look small. <laughs> I've been dwarfed. <laughs> All right, you too, Leslie. Okay, now I'm going to try to say this again and hopefully be accurate. I do believe that is the last structure for Remnant of the Zoo. And what we saw today is only 10 to 20 percent of what used to be here most of it got wiped away in the flood and with the construction of the levee so what we saw today operated up until 1946 and surprisingly still you know for the most part hanging on quite well but we are going to continue our through the woods and we're going to make our way out back to the park and show you a pretty cool train bridge that will be the last portion of the stream. So if you guys want to stick around as we continue to walk, you're welcome to. Otherwise, if you only came to see the zoo portions of it, that was pretty much all of it right there.
Ooh, some big holes here. Yeah, I see that. Makes you wonder what was here. Cliff, are you down there? Cliff? <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, Cliff Squatch, are you down there? <laughs> no cliff sightings today. Zoo is on CNN. I don't think it's this zoo, is it? You will hold this one second. Again. I throw my bag on. Thank you. Now, if we uh, go the right direction, last time I was here with Mike, we came through a section of the woods and there was a really cool tree that was kind of bent over. And I attempted walking up it. And even though it was only a few feet off the ground, I don't know, it was quite terrifying. So <laughs> I'm not sure if I'll recreate that today or not. We'll see. Hey, Melissa. See you, Steven. I mean, it's just funny we didn't see any plumbing or drains or anything in there resembling a bathroom, but again, person though, the first building look like a concession stand, but seeing that building, it's almost identical, except the door is on the opposite side. So it very well could have been men and women bathrooms, but not the kind you commonly see today. Yeah, it's been flooded many times. 36 was the first one, there was Agnes in 72. I think there was maybe one in the 50s, if I'm not mistaken. So that's why. The, you okay? Almost. <laughs> the uh, ground under that. <laughs> the ground underneath that uh, grandstand was kind of halfway filled up with debris. Can't walk in there anymore because from all the flooding. There was asphalt here. The asphalt is gone now. This is more just a dirt trail. We were walking on asphalt for a good portion of it. Sunday Night Live with the gang of all the top 10 best videos. Uh, I don't think I have enough room in my studio for the whole gang. But I'm going to have them on there slowly one by one. Uh, okay, this is... I can't remember. I think we went that way last time. It does continue straight this way. What do you think? Uh, I haven't been either way, so either way is good with me. Uh, we'll leave it up to you guys. We'll let you pick. <clears throat> you want us to go straight? If you want us to go straight, put number one. If you want us to make a bend in the fork in the road here, put number two. And majority of the votes will go that direction. Another poll marker. Yeah, I see it. You guys are kind of split down the middle here. <laughs> Anybody keeping count? Because I'm seeing a bunch of twos and ones. I don't know who's leading. But I think... Okay, some more ones coming in. Since I almost certainly went that way last time, I know where that goes. I'm pretty sure. I guess we'll keep going straight since we never went this way. And we'll see where it takes us. <laughs> I 
one go one way, one goes the other. <laughs> we may never find each other. If we had the walkie-talkies, that'd be a good idea, actually. Yeah. I didn't bring them today, though. Uh-oh, not sure how we could pass this. Got a log in the road. Good thing we're on foot. Just walk over it. Okay. Yes, I'm prepared for class. Didn't bring all my tools. Jumping wouldn't be good. The ground is quite slick and muddy. So if I fell on the ground, I'd be calling life alert. I've fallen and I don't want to get up. Uh oh, the crows are circling us. I guess better crows than vultures. Yeah, back here it's actually really quiet and peaceful. A little more muddier, but that's okay. Just gotta take it easy. That's a crossover, I think. Kind of squishy here, but I came prepared wearing boots. I know some people saying internet connection is unstable. Losing signal. Okay. Getting kind of dead. We'll be going too dense back. All right, we should be getting back into clarity now. Sorry about that. I guess going straight wasn't the best decision. No, 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 no. Yeah. Not only was it extremely muddy and soft, but we were losing reception there, so. Yeah, it looks like it. All right, back. Can you guys see, hear anything? Now, RJ, don't be blaming nature's carpet, okay? That's not nice. They have feelings too. Uh, I think somebody called the cops on us. I hear the sirens. Yeah, so in case you're wondering, we turned around um, when we stopped here to question you. We decided to go that way, and I'm kind of glad we turned around because it seems like the lesser known traveled path. It's very muddy and soft and squishy. And on top of that, we started losing the signal. So we turned around, and now we're going to go the way we originally thought we knew where we were going. So we're going this way regardless. Bye, Elaine. Yep, 
Yeah, I believe I came this way last time. This way I know we have signal the whole way. Yeah, Tim, I was wondering where you were. Hopefully everything's okay on your end. But good to see you on here today. Probably hear the birds tweeting. What is this? It's like a fire extinguisher. Hmm. RJ, you may be able to be uh, some assistance here with some information. Oh, I wonder if that's like a weed sprayer, the kind you pump up. I thought it was a fire extinguisher. Yeah. Looks like somebody's been collecting stuff and just left it here. Yeah, that's a, like a weed killer sprayer or fertilizer sprayer. You can see the nozzle right there. Kind of weird to be out here, though. Huh. Yeah, that's a kind you pump up with the handle. Chemical sprayer, I guess. And I want to show you, this is a nice area of woods here. This is a nice area here. It's almost like a little swamp area, but all the fallen trees, though. You can only imagine what's probably in that water. Oh, Rob, I'm live right now. <laughs> Peace and quiet back here. Yeah. yeah, if you guys want to throw that sprayer in Craigslist, come and get it. <laughs> and there we go. More carpet. Time to get the vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like there was some type of post here or a sign or something at one point probably got flooded away yeah hopefully it's just someone trying to clean up the plastic hopefully they come and get it because if it sits there it's going to get washed away or blown away again Are we back on? Are we here? All right, now here's the tree I was mentioning before, if you guys heard me, I'm not sure if it cut out. Uh, last time I was here, I actually tried walking up this. Um, Mike was here holding the camera. I walked up it and I almost got freaked out because it was, I felt like I was gonna slip and fall off of there, even though it's not a far fall, but enough to hurt yourself. But I'm not gonna do it today because my boots are actually covered in mud now. But I just still like that tree though. It's covered in moss on top. And it's nice and uh nice big tree just laying there. Conditions are perfect. Sorry about the interruptions too. It's just kind of dense back here, but the closer we get back to the park, the better it'll be. But again, we are gonna make our way towards the train bridge that's the far end of the park. Just want to show that to you. Maybe we'll get lucky a train will come by, but it's a cool looking train bridge. And won't hurt to take another look at it. 
Yeah, muddy boots on a fallen tree with moss would not be a good idea. Have to come away with a nice dry spell. Wear my hiking boots and be a bit more confident going across it. There's a square timber there. Yeah. That's definitely man made. It's like a big tie almost. It's frozen earlier. Yeah, we went through a dense spot, so my apologies for that. You can see in the distance that big hill there, that is the levee. We're going back towards that now. And we're going to get up on top of the levee, walk towards the train bridge, and through the trees I see a big homeless camp back here. So, I'm not going to get too close to that. You can see there's a couple tents there and items thrown about. Tree just said, ouch. <laughs> Gosh. So the homeless area that we saw last time was actually closer to the beginning where we started our video. Looks like they moved further back here. And again, garbage laying around, more garbage. Looks like somebody's making attempts to at least put it in piles, but it's still just laying here. RJ, I know you're looking for your hat. I found it right there. And it's got turquoise band around it. I know you're looking for it, so somehow it ended up here. Now they're actually in a pretty dense area back there. I don't even know how they got back there. There's no direct path going there. Some clothes hanging on a tree right there. Yeah. So we'll let them have their privacy. We'll leave them be. Well, RJ, just remember, sharing is caring. <laughs> so if I ever want to borrow that hat, better hand it over. Wrong way for what? We're going back up in the levee and taking it to the train bridge. Getting mud out the boots, yeah, stomping our feet. We're asserting our dominance in the woods. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I know how to get to the bridge. I've been here before. Just didn't want to stay through the woods. It's just getting really muddy and thick. And there's somebody sitting there by the train tracks. So here it is on top of the levee, in case you're wondering what it looks like. It's not all that exciting. It's just now a walking, biking path. And it uh, runs right through Kirby Park.
Yeah, last time we were here, like I said, I streamed here once before we came this exact way to the train bridge. Now you can actually see the homeless camp from here. Yeah. Got a pretty straight shot from there. Yeah. Uh, all right, so long, Rob. Thanks for hanging out. I'm going to try to zoom in to show you. That's all their stuff back there. They like a little camp setup probably for multiple individuals. Uh, the zoo is not terribly big. It's only a smaller portion of it that is in, still existing today. Much of it was wiped out during a flood and the construction of this levee. So we're gonna come up here to this uh, gate here and we're gonna hang a left and show you the train bridge, it's all metal. Now if you follow this out, it takes you out to Route 11, and there's still a... Is that Kmart still open? Yes. Yep. Yeah, there's a, still an existing Kmart straight ahead. See the where? Right there. Yeah, there's drainage or for sewer maybe. Mm, okay. Has a the hatch on it. There's a train box here, electrical box. And this line is still active. I just don't know how frequently though. But the rails are shiny, so it does see service. But we're gonna obviously not walk on the tracks, but we do want to take you down. And show you that. Not a trestle, but it is a bridge. And it's railroad related, which to me is always fun to check out. We're going to walk on the other side here. And again, if you take this straight out, it goes out to Route 11, which is, I believe, Edwardsville. Yes. And there's a Kmart down there still open. So that kind of puts you into perspective as to where we are right now. Sometimes they go through. Is this uh, used by the uh, the short line? I think it's Luzerne Susquehanna Railway. If I'm not mistaken, I think they're out of like uh, they're right next to Reading and Northern there in Duryea Pittston area. Are they the ones that use this, or is this Norfolk Southern? Stand by me. That, well, that's the trestle. That's the abandoned trestle we covered. That one is like probably the closest one to that movie you'll find. But this is just a. Big gargantuan metal train bridge. Uh, most of the Kmarts are gone, not all of them, still a couple. The one here in Edwardsville is one of the few existing ones. I believe it's shuttered to be closed soon, I think. I think it was one of the last ones to be designated to shut down. Now out here too, on the right-hand side, below, before the train bridge, are some big concrete foundations. They are remnants of a, something like a radio tower, I believe. So we'll be able to see part of that. Oh yeah, there's a homeless camp here. You can see pretty good. Let me zoom in one more time to show you. It's hard to see with all the branches, but the uh, that is that homeless camp. So we kind of just walked around it. It's a good thing we need to keep walking through the woods, though, because it's uh, pretty swampy down here. It'd be very difficult to uh, navigate. The 
green pond. It actually has a name. I never knew that. Blue light special, yes. And the K Cafe. Kmart was my first job, 16 years old. Started as a uh, cashier, which I didn't like, and turned into a uh, stockman, where I would gather carts in the parking lot, help people carry out heavy items for the car. And I ended up losing my job after that. By no fault of my own, I was kind of, I think I mentioned it before in another story, I was kind of almost like set up they were trying to out, out to get me for some reason and forced me to, not forced me to quit, actually terminated me for saying I did something wrong even though I didn't do it. I'll save that story for another time. Ooh, almost went down. After that, my second job was working at a local restaurant called Mark II as a dishwasher. Didn't last very long there. I actually couldn't stand that job. Cleaning the kitchen, cleaning the bathrooms, running things in the dishwasher for hours on end. Not a very fun time and the money was crappy. But it was something until I transitioned over to Montage Mountain Ski Resort. And then worked at Fleet Bank for a while. Worked at Walmart, well, Walmart before Fleet Bank. So then eventually got into driving and security, which was my two favorite professions. Besides what I do now. It would be quite awesome if a train came rolling through here, but I never seem to be that lucky. Every time we wait in the Taylor yard, the train always comes by after we leave. Laura says hi. Hey, Laura. Lunch break, I guess. This is a good sized bridge. There's a black bridge in the woods between Taylor and Music. I've crossed that before, both on ATVs and on foot when I was younger. That one's a quarter of the size of this one. This one is maybe as long as the abandoned trestle in length, but it's a fully structured metal cage around it. And um, not nearly as high off the ground. So I mentioned earlier about the radio tower. They are right down there. You see the four supports that would have held a really massive radio tower. Lackawanna State Park, the old what? Well, I think I missed the comment there. Oh, so this is Norfolk Southern, so it is the, uh, I know this is a um, spur line for businesses, or this is part of their main line. Looks like QT's been here, of course, right there. It says, like, Quam Com Tom, bunch of hearts. Any dead bodies. I'm not really looking for them, so hopefully not. Now, like the uh, abandoned trestle, which has a wooden walkway. This is a uh, metal see-through grating. Not my favorite. Oh, here's QT2, 2017. Yeah, he's been here a few times. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that picture right there is a self-portrait of QT. <laughs> no, quite rude artwork. Yes, David, these are not my favorite type of walking paths. I'd rather be 
non-see-through. Although I will take metal over wood, but still not fond of it. What does it say? Green Day knew about punk rock anarchy. Did you see that? Oh. Yeah. Monica, have you ever run into suspicious activities? Absolutely. Thank you for the super chat. Um, one scenario is um, RJ, myself, a few others. We're at the uh, abandoned mini golf course in Gettysburg, and we came upon taggers tagging in the cave. Also came to many other locations where um, people were just kind of looking suspicious and just kind of like waiting for us to move or leave the area. So. Fresh paint, yeah, you're still able to smell the paint too. Not very wise to cross the bridge. Train comes by, that's a uh, immediate find in a rest right there. Got some more QT, 10, 20, 19, 121, 18. So QT really made their mark here. This is the Susquehanna River. I'd actually love for a train to come right now. <laughs> to see what he would do if I would start booking it. I would definitely cross this, you know, if I knew I wouldn't get in trouble. I mean, I think this is actually frequented by people like him on a regular basis crossing it. I'm definitely not going to do it, especially during a live stream. I know there's some people out there that would quickly make a phone call. Oh, they're trespassing. They're doing this. They're doing that. But, um, the bridge is definitely structurally sound. I still think I'd probably walk between the rails, just my own well-being, peace of mind. But that is, that metal grating is definitely strong enough to hold. Looks like it's relatively new. Maybe that's QT. <laughs> Does he look like that drawing on the wall there, on the post? Is there a resemblance? Actually, I'll QT, see if he turns around. No sense of adventure and no life at that. If I saw somebody, you know, mildly breaking the law, like crossing a train bridge, I wouldn't call and report them. I would just watch the footage and enjoy it. You know, it's up to them if they get in trouble, not up to me. I still love it. People watch the uh, abandoned house videos. You know, that's not really an open door policy. You, you're breaking and entering. Well, no, I didn't break in. We freely walked in. And how do you think we got the footage if it's abandoned? We have to go inside. And furthermore, why are you watching it? Like, go watch like a gardening video. <laughs> to critique about an abandoned video where you physically have to go inside it to film it and to complain about it, it's just kind of ridiculous on your part. I just don't get it to this day. The best example I gave it to RJ and Lori the other day, it's like going to a uh, Arby's restaurant and trying to order a pizza and then bitching about it because they don't serve pizza. Like. You purposely went there knowing that what you're gonna find or not find, and you're gonna sit there and complain about it. If you come to an abandoned video, what do you think you're gonna see? You're gonna see an abandoned video. We're not sitting there going through with the owner. The place is abandoned for a reason. We're documenting it before it's gone. So those people just make themselves look foolish. And to this day, I get at least one of those comments almost every day. The plane, boss, the plane. I can't even find the plane. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Yeah. 
all right so no train coming just some random indiv individuals we are gonna walk the levee back towards our vehicle now so we're gonna keep the stream on for a few more minutes if you have any questions for myself or adam you're welcome to ask we will pay attention to the chat and once we get closer we will wrap things up but it's been pretty incredible though we had perfect weather got to see everything we want to see and then some and got to hang out with all of you which is the highlight of the, the whole trip so tattoo the plane welcome to fantasy island it's my horrible what? impression sure that was. yeah they're white suits you know they went through about a hundred of them every episode <laughs> no way you could stay clean on that hot island Another good example too of people complaining would be like me going to Sparky's channel. Sparky's channel is about model railroading. And I'd be like, what? You're not gonna drive a real train? It's all miniature scale? Like what's up with that crap? <laughs> <laughs> That's how ridiculous it would sound. And how ridiculous it does sound when people complain about me filming abandoned places. Do you think we fly in a robot or a drone to get all the footage? Do you think we have x-ray vision to see the inside? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's also like going to the worst restaurant in town, ordering something there, and then complaining to the manager that the food sucks. Well, you went there firsthand knowing how it is. And if you've seen the title, the word abandoned in the title, well, you know, it means usually going inside, exploring. I mean, I, I just make fun of the situation now. It used, it used to bother me for a while, but then I just realized these people have no sense of like common sense or understanding of anything as to what takes place. And I try to tell people, you know, if I get arrested, that's on me. Does it affect you? Does it affect your life at all if I get arrested? No. So what the heck do you care? What happens in my video? I'm providing free entertainment. And by me, I'm by no means right now griping or complaining or ranting. I'm just trying to let you guys know what you have to deal with. Once you start getting a larger channel, the crazies come out in droves. But they are outnumbered significantly by you guys. There's every one idiotic complainer out there. There's a hundred fantastic people that love the videos. And that's what keeps me pushing on to keep putting out the content. Curry Park is in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. They actually have a pretty big celebration here for, I believe, 4th of July. I think, I'm not mistaken, they have a carnival they bring here. They have a fireworks show that's pretty big. Um, oh yeah, they go all out in here. Yeah, I think they, have they, have, have they had car shows here before? Yes. Yeah, car shows too, okay. They have car shows either here or they'll be uh, right up uh, North Hampton Street at the college parking lot, they'll have them. And yeah, every last Friday of every month is a car show in the square. Uh, all cruising laws are put to the side because they make an ungodly amount of money on that, so. Okay. Okay, Monica says, skip a couple times and sing Lollipop. Bring back memories of Stand By Me. <laughs> $5 super chat. I don't know if I'm physically capable of doing that. <laughs> well, Monica, do you want me to skip holding the camera or do you want... Adam to hold it so you can see me skipping. I'll do it for a second. I'm not a good singer though. Hang on, let me see what they say here. Okay. So I can skip holding the camera, or I could hand it to Adam so you can see me skipping down the tracks. They want to see me. <laughs> I'm going to hand this off to you. Okay. I'm going to put the mic on you too. All right. Where do you can put it on? Okay, everybody. You're going to get ready. You go get this way. Yeah. 
I guess I'll skip towards you, so give me a second. All right. He's gonna, what he's going to do is going to move up a little bit, and he's going to skip toward me. So that's what we're going to have going on right now. Yeah, just keep the camera straight, okay? Will do. Here he goes. Lollipop, lollipop, oh, lolly, 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 lollipop. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> nicely done, nicely done. There we go. All right, hopefully I earned your $5. <laughs> oh. Thank you. You're welcome. That was the best I could do. I can't sing or dance. I can skip. That's about it. You're better about 90% of the people I've ever heard. <laughs> the things I do for you guys. All in good fun. And you can verify with RJ. I'm actually a pretty good skipper. <laughs> I skip many times and I get some pretty good speed and distance out of it so it's one of the things I could do well being a bigger guy the things I've never seen not for JP that is true not many people show you this kind of stuff or skip for you for a uh, super chat down the train tracks recreating stand by me so go put a smile on your face i'm happy and running now if i was able to do the sound effect i'd do the naruto run I'm glad to hear that, Sandra. Have a good one. Can I live there in secret? You mean live in Kirby Park like the homeless people? I guess so. $10 hurdle jump, Sparky. Come on, now, let's be realistic. I'm lucky if I could break the first horse there. Never mind the third oh, one. I'll give you an idea. Hi, Chip. Yeah, he'll show you how high that is. Remember, I'm six foot two. He's six foot two. He'll show you how tall that is. You'd have to be like. What's that, uh, that runner guy? Usain Bolt or whatever it is. Yeah, that one's up to his neck. No way I'm skipping over that or <laughs> hopping over that. That would be impressive if I could. Second one, I could probably do the, put the hand on it and hop over it. I wouldn't clear it though, I'm not that nimble. Monica, thanks for being a great sport. You're welcome. Thanks for your donations and super chats. I'd be singing high nice front if I try it. <laughs> <laughs> Sparky, better yet, you come and do it first. If I see you do it, then I'll attempt it. But I know I won't make it. I'll have to find a horse down at Strasburg, see if you can jump it. And I'll remember it too, don't you worry. You said the stage is on the other side of it, do it that. <laughs> <laughs> put a trampoline in front of it, put an airbag behind it. Yeah, right? There you go. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. Hilarious. Good spot for camping. Well, like we show, there's a lot of people that are camping in the woods. Not for recreation, though. Well, if you guys are tuning in late, we did show the old zoo ruins and the one structure, which was the grandstand. I showed before pictures of it and the afterwards of it and the basement which is partially filled in from flooding. Um, it's filled with garbage, clothing, signs of people living there. So what was something really beautiful and historic is now someone's loving space, garbage dump. Somebody asked about streaming tonight. Uh, I'm not gonna be streaming tonight because I'm streaming right now and I will be releasing a video this evening with all the details for our first meetup event. So I don't wanna do too much in one day since i'm already doing two videos today alone 
Um, so tomorrow, tomorrow or Wednesday night, I'll probably do a later night stream. Not super late, but you know, 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And I'm hoping uh, either Friday night or Saturday early afternoon to do a drive stream. And Saturday night, if weather permits, will be our uh, hello paranormal investigation live stream. So Saturday will be a busy day, but I definitely will make time for some live streams and at least one drive stream. I know people have been asking about it. Not sure if I'll be alone or with someone, but the plans are in the near future to have uh, a bunch of the guys with me for one of the drive streams. Um, like for example, like Adam, RJ, Alan and Cliff, you know, just for an example, or Adam, uh, Mike, RJ, stuff like that. Just do variations of different groups of us driving around, getting some food, chatting with everyone, fighting in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will keep you guys posted on my community tab on Facebook. I should say community tab and on Facebook uh, for the live stream, what time we'll be starting. And in case there's any changes with the weather right now, I think it's looking okay for weather. We had to cancel last time last month because of weather. So if the live stream will go on, I'll share the details as to what time we'll be starting either Friday night or Saturday morning, but it'll definitely be a Saturday evening paranormal investigation. And as of right now, there's about five or six of us going. So it should be a big group of us. They're all just standing around staring at their phones down there. <laughs> it's actually really warm right now. Yeah, one of the nicer days we've had recently. Really tired of the wind and the rain. I do want one good snowfall just to be done with it, but Days like today aren't too bad. Hope you get the notifications. Well, Monica or anyone else, like I said, if you're having trouble receiving notifications, the trick that seems to be working is to physically unsubscribe from my channel. Just click on the button where it shows you're subscribed. Wait a few minutes, hit the button again to resubscribe. And then when you ring the bell or click the bell, you choose all for notifications. That seems to help to start getting notifications again. Hope your camera's still here when you get here. No, wouldn't be a good idea to leave a camera here. So we're gonna go down here. There's um, a, uh, you might see some fencing here. It's actually uh, a levee block that allows water to pass through if it ever got flooded. We're gonna go down the side of that there and just give you a brief look at that. And then we're gonna head back towards the parking lot. I just say warning. Objects near bottom of levee, no sledding. Yeah, the workout stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, it stinks that you can't go down these steps. They have them gated off, so we're going to have to walk okay. down the side of them. Okay. Still use the rail to hold on to. Yeah.
Yeah, these are the big levee doors. Uh, probably hard to see. Let me get closer. Now, if water is ever to flood in here in the park area, they could uh, raise these doors and the water will travel through to the other side and drain back into the Susquehanna River. Not a big fan of crowds. <laughs> yeah, RJ's making friends everywhere he goes, even teenagers. Yeah, many people these days don't like crowds just because people don't know how to act. Myself and Joel will be the first ones to tell you we'd rather be just with ourselves rather than around a hundred obnoxious, pushy people. Now, if you're with a group of friends, that's one thing, but total strangers who act like animals, it's not a fun time. Even walking through Walmart, you know, that's another pet peeve that I could mention more so for Jill. She typically pushes the cart when we go, you know, people will walk out right in front of you, cut you off, lock the aisle. And then when you say, excuse me, they look at you like you're crazy. Like, how dare you ask me to move out of the way? Like, crazy what people, the way they think these days. Makes you just want to grab a can of tomato soup and throw it at their head. <laughs> <laughs> Knock some sense into them. Baseball bats and golf clubs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Italian festival is the same way. We went last year. Um, it wasn't too terribly bad. We went towards the evening. There was a little bit of rain off and on, which chased people away. But uh, typically, stuff like that's not very fun. Long lines of people and people being loud and everything else and overpriced stuff. Let's go to that uh, picnic table there. Okay. So we're going to grab a seat here for a moment at the picnic table. Give you guys some face time with both of us here and... Uh, Kind of wrap up today's adventure. You sit on one side, I'll sit on the other. I'll have the camera facing both of us. The sun facing us. All right, so um, I'm going to put this in the middle so they can hear both of us. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed our adventure today, showing you the remains of the Kirby, Kirby Park Zoo here at the Kirby Park in Wilkesbury. Uh, I think adding the photos to the stream was a good idea. That way you can see what it used to look like with some of those structures and knowing how they look today. You know, being abandoned, not used since the 1940s, even though there's still concrete foundations and stuff, they're still holding up pretty well. Even those concessions slash bathroom buildings, you know, they're standing still pretty good for a long time. Uh, as you saw, though, there's a lot of remnants. And I shouldn't say remnants, signs of people living back there. There's garbage, there's trash, there's clothing. There's uh, people's personal items. We saw people's food items back there. Even the, what was it, the kid's boot? Yeah. Kid's boot. Kid's shoes, yeah. Um, the Halloween mask. A lot of weird items that you wouldn't see at a family park. But uh, like I said, if you come to see it for yourself, it is relatively safe. Just got to use your best judgment. Have some type of protection or come with a group of people. But all you have terrain. To, yeah, all you have to do is go on the other side of the levee, though. There's a walking trail. It was a bit muddy and slick today. Both of us almost went down more than once. Uh, so if you come after a dry spell or when it's really frozen, that's probably the best time. But all in all though, it wasn't bad. I know we had a couple blips with the stream with signal, but um, it was just pretty dense back there. So we couldn't really do much about that. But overall, I think we were able to show you everything we wanted to see. But um, I'll turn it over to Adam. If he wants to share any thoughts, he's welcome to. Well, my first time here, very impressed. Love seeing everything out there. It was sad to see, you know, the kids' shoes and stuff like that, and the, the mask and stuff like that. Knowing that there's a possibility there might be kids back there that might be homeless with their families. God bless them. Um, 
but to see all the remnants of the zoo, to see the, all the buildings the, the, and everything else, just incredible. Uh, it just, I can't wait to come back. Um, those of you two who are local to the area, I do know um, a few of you are watching who live around here. Um, many people didn't know about it, as I mentioned. There's a gentleman named Steve we met here who lives close by. He came to check it out for himself. We bumped into him. A few others watching I know live close to the area. So if you haven't ever seen it for yourself, come take a walk. Um, see for yourself because you can't learn anymore, you know, and that's why we do document this stuff, even though it's nothing significant or exciting. It is something that's historically significant and important to the area of Wilkesbury. Um, as I mentioned, and Adam mentioned too, this park though does have some times in the year where they do draw large crowds. They do have a fireworks celebration, whether they bring in a carnival, they do have car shows here sometimes. So if you want to find out more information, just Google Kirby Park Wilkesbury and you'll be able to probably find a Facebook or an event page. Uh, otherwise though, um, I had a great time today. Weather finally cooperated. It's a beautiful sunny day. I'm on the verge of sweating. It's actually so nice out right now. Um, we probably walked, you know, well over a mile, but it was, wasn't too bad. And it's definitely worth it. It was great to hang out with all of you. Also, everyone who donated today, uh, thank you so very much for the super chats and hope you guys enjoyed my little rendition of Lollipop. <laughs> Sk skipping down the train tracks. I'll have to watch that on the replay to see how goofy that looks. But um, without rambling anymore, I just want to thank you guys for hanging out with us. With, uh, hanging out with us today. It was a great time. Tonight I will have a new video uploaded sharing details for our first meetup event coming up later in March. So hopefully you could maybe uh, consider coming out to that event. Meet myself, meet Adam, meet others who are coming to that event as well. And uh, be on the lookout for a random live stream sometime this week and a drive stream as well. So, anything else? I want to thank you, one, for inviting me, two, for sharing the information that you researched on the, the zoo that I was able to pick up and put on with my video that I'll be putting up here in the new, near future. Um, can't wait to do more exp exploration. And if you guys want to find Adam's channel, all you have to do is go under any of the videos where he leaves a comment, click on his name, that is his channel. I could also go ahead and leave a link for him uh, later on today. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to. Go to his channel. He does make videos of some of the locations we go to. I also forgot, too, I want to thank him for finding that waiting pool because we missed that last time. And he's like, hey, I think this is it right here. I'm glad I saw it. Lo and behold, he found it. So that was pretty awesome. But um, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. And until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Have a good one, everybody.